Um, before we start off and go into anything else fun and interesting, I want to just, you know, acknowledge uh, Mac Miller's passing. So RIP Mac Miller, um, as I'm sure everyone is well aware, um, he passed over the weekend from an apparent drug overdose. Um, but the details are still to, to be confirmed. Um, it's a sad occasion for everyone involved, I think, for fans, for people that were casual observers and kind of just liked his personality anyway. Uh, for people that were following his drama in relationships um, lately in the past few years. And um, for people that were eagerly anticipating his tour that was up and coming that looked incredible. Um, for people that just got put onto him when he did the NPR tiny desk. Everyone, it's a really, really sad occasion for everyone involved. Um, it's sad to see such a young, um, promising talent such as Mac Miller uh, life get taken away just through negligence um, for the most part. Do you know what I mean? Um, you don't... You're not that annoyed if it's like a freak accident or some shit, but if it's just real pure negligence and overindulgence, it's always a little bit concerning. But I guess if you chip away at the story a little bit, there is obvious pain and tor torture and torment going on in his life that led him to this extent. And it's just sad to see somebody at that age go through that much level of pain and having to kind of self-medicate themselves. Or maybe on the other end, maybe it's not. Maybe they just enjoy recreational drugs and they just got a bit over the top this time, right? Because there is a... There is, it does feel sometimes that there is a reaction when celebrities have overdoses or drug-related deaths that, you know, they should be talking to somebody or there's an outpouring of emotion. People want to talk to their friends and make sure people are not going over the edge. But sometimes um, we don't know the ins and outs of anyone's life, right? So people are maybe reading into things and thinking that Mac Miller was depressed because Ariana Grande broke up with him. But we don't know if it was like, you know, if he was over it anyway. If he had moved on, if he had another girlfriend, if he wasn't even thinking about her, and if he just, you know, liked doing drugs and did too much, and then he died. <coughs> That's a possibility too. So, I, again, I'm not sure where I stand on it. Um, I think it is a bit weird. It is something that needs to be um, analysed and looked at. You know, all these young musicians, especially within hip-hop, who are unfortunately passing or are getting pulled in by the grips of prescription drugs. There is a problem there happening. Um, I do have a little bit of disdain for some of the bigger artists who are promoting drug use who obviously don't take drugs. I've got this theory that I've held for a long time that a lot of those guys, like, you know, the f Futures and the Weekends and stuff who promote a lot of drug use don't do as many drugs as people think they do. I think they just like the allure of saying they do drugs or they are talking about a life that they led before they became this global superstar. I just don't think you can be Future and make DS2 and do as many drugs as he says he does. I don't think it's possible. Um, I know, uh, um, having done drugs in the past, or having friends who have uh, succumbed to too much drug use, I know what that looks like. And I know that's not possible to do it at that level with, with that amount of resources, with that amount of free time, and still be uh, f uh, a high caliber artist. I don't think it's something that's manageable. Um, but maybe it is, again, because it's something that's always been mulling in my head, because I'm sure there's people out there who exist who have a nine to five, have a family, have a business, uh, do a very high powered job, um, are responsible for a lot of people who do drugs on a daily basis and are able to function in society. They do exist, and I'm sure, and I have another theory that they're probably the majority of people, right? I think the majority of people are able to sustain uh, consistent drug use without it being a problem and without it affecting their family or without affecting their workplace, more so than the ones who kind of um, get um, get a bit, you know, off track and kind of lose everything. I think so for the most part. I think they do exist. The same way how, you know, I have over the years become a little bit more tolerant to alcohol, but a few years ago or a couple of years ago, you know, more if if i drank too much it would lead me to make really really bad decisions um it would allow me to put myself in positions that would jeopardize my career would jeopardize my friendships but now over time through drinking again and for drinking uh, numerous times and kind of um getting my tolerance level lower well higher and higher and higher i've now seen a big difference in the amounts i can drink and the amounts i'm able to function so I'm sure if you extrapolate that and take that into drugs, I'm pretty sure people can do the same sort of thing. Now, whether or not it's healthy, whether or not it's something that you should be doing, you know, I think we can all agree it's not something that everyone should be doing in that, to that level of extent. But I don't know, man. I'm just, I just don't know what to make of it. Oh, I just don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know if this is a... If this is a um, consequence of social media that's flattening, you know, the playground, so everyone's seeing everyone. So if you're Mac Miller and even though you're super successful and you have your own little dedicated lane with your own hardcore fans, you have 1,000 true fans who will buy your albums again and again every single year so you don't have to work another day in your life. I still think there is a little bit of 
that that exists even if you're an outside Mac Miller where you're always look kind of looking over your you're kind of always looking over your garden fence and checking over the other the neighbor's garden do you know what I mean and seeing oh the grass is always green on the other side I think so it does must exist um I don't know if it's a consequence of that I don't know if it's a consequence again of just having the resources and just overindulging yourself you know doing lines of coke at 10 in the morning because you just you can you don't have to work anywhere you don't have any responsibilities you have no kids and whatever I don't know if it's a fact of being led astray by friends I don't know if it's a fact of you know you're suffering a lot inside so you just want to self-medicate because i know i've had weird periods like randomly where i've just gone got blackout drunk for no reason right no reason just got blackout drunk um and i don't know whether or not that was a again because i i bottle i bottle a lot of stuff up like i'm fairly even killed but i'm also aware that there was a you know there's a tsunami there's a tornado there's a typhoon happening with inside of me right i know that that's happening all the time consistent whenever i'm pushing stuff to one side there is something happening on the inside and i don't know whether or not that acting out um that overindulgence of alcohol is like my response to it outwardly maybe i don't know so i guess it goes about saying you know whoever does whoever is out there who's suffering and who has a little bit of inner turmoil going on in there who's self-questioning themselves i think the best possible thing you can do apart from going to speak to people which you probably won't do because you know you're suffering alone is to turn off social media man turn off the internet and step away go for a walk go for a run and kind of interact with the real world like get tactile again and then you'll it'll kind of put stuff into perspective i've seen it myself anyway that's what's helped me a lot um i don't necessarily suffer from any sort of um mental issues or go through bouts of uh low self-esteem or anything of that malarkey i don't really have that in me but if i am feeling a bit bummed out about something or you know whatever I have I've, I do notice that whenever I just unplug, it just sorts the situation out completely, and I'm not I'm no, I know that's not rare. I know that's not something that's rare to anybody else. I know that kind of like overstimulation on the internet sometimes can lead your brain to making up conclusions of things that don't actually aren't actually happening or don't actually make any sense. I'm sure that happens a lot more regularly than not. Um, so yeah, sad to see him pass. R.I.P. Um, to all Mike Miller fans. R.I.P. to all. Uh, I guess um, take care of yourself, all Mike Miller fans, and I guess remember him for his music, innit? Um, the last album that came out was amazing. That performance of 2009 on NPR is something to be heralded and held up there with um, Amy Wynas' Amy Wynas last performance where she was performing in a church in Ireland. I forgot this. Amy Wynas' performance, she was performing a cappella in a church somewhere. It's an amazing performance. Um, I think that NPR performance with Mike Miller will be looked back on time as you know one of the greats. So yeah, um, RIP Mac Miller, man.